How was your holiday, Arwen? Great. I definitely didn't spend any money. Hi, it's me, Arwen. Um, <laughs> today I thought it would be different and I love watching these videos and cool if I did a book haul because I actually for once went and bought some books in a bookstore. There's a story about that which I'll tell now and then we'll get into the book haul. Um, basically there's this one shop called Bargain Books and I'm on holiday and I walk past this shop every time me and my grandma go and do grocery shopping for the house because she loves to take me with its thing. Anyway and it's this book and there's a red sticker and my family loves red stickers and even though it was only a 20 rand discount every time I walk by I'm like damn I want to read this book because I read the prequel this is the, no this is the prequel I read the book that was published first which is um they both die at the end and I love it what was the both yeah the, they both die at the end I read that and I loved it with a passion and then I thought hold on this is like I need to read this but again, I walked past and past, and then one day me and my friend went to the mall just to like catch up and stuff because she I hadn't seen her since I left high school. And we walk in the bookstore. And then I see they have a special. Three for 150 Rand. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. I go and buy three books for 150, and then it was three or 450 Rand, or each for 70. So I go buy three books and one seventy rand, and I go to the front because this was in the window. I go to the window and I go, I really want this book. It's fine. I'm gonna spend it. I'm gonna splash the money. Cool. Flash forward to the next day. My parents are going to go get something else, and I bought this book and I wanted to get the first book. That's all I wanted to do. Get the first book. The special is still on. Next to it is a three for two hundred rand special. So I bought six more books that day. Three for 200 and three for 150 Rand. And that's how I ended up with 11 books. And then also, book lovers are gonna hate me for this. I bought these two books, which is poetry books. This one, because it's like plant poetry, because I wanna change my room, this wall back there, I wanna make full of books, like book pages. And there's cute drawings and stuff of flowers and it's poetry. And I got this one for, this one is two little pages, which it probably will be. And I got them both for a total of, this was 5 Rand, this was 10 Rand, 15 Rand I paid for both of these books. This is a second hand bookstore. So yeah, I'm not going to read, I will read these before I put them up, but like poetry books. So these are the first two books, um, pretty old, not exactly like, oh I need to read this, it was like a, ooh, that's interesting, poetry book. I could use this for my wall. And then I just went and found another poetry book, which is similar ish in size. And page cutter. Anyway, that's those two books. Let's get started with the rest. It is very hot. Hold on. Semi better because I don't want to be looking like a mole rat. Okay, first up we have, I've already talked about it, but The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is a story about basically the whole plot of the story, like the setting of the story is the sign or the government has figured out a way death cost is what they're called yes death cost has figured out a way to let you know if it's your final day and you're gonna die today and then you get a text message on the day that you die and this whole society's been built up and you can go do fun activities etc on your last day spend it with family so you know the day you're gonna die but they give it to you on the day um, This is very sad. I just read the blurb. Um, one of the boys gets a death call, but the other one doesn't. So, yeah, this is like they both die at the end, but the prequel, I'm very excited. They both die at the end was beautifully written. Even though it had a spoiler in the title, I still cried. It was amazing. I'm very excited. I want to finish. I want to start reading this, but I first need to finish another book. So this is that. Then what else do I have? Oh, Skeleton's Guide to Suitcase Murders. Problem is this is book number two of the series. Book number one is back there. Um, Skeleton's Guide to Domestic Poisons. But this sounds pretty cool. I bought it because it's a murder mystery. A lot of these I just bought because it's a murder mystery and because of the cover. 
Um, this is written by David Stafford and basically this guy, this guy, um, Skelton I think, is has a reputation for winning hopeless cases and hold on there's this woman she's found in a suitcase dead dismembered and then her husband is the chief suspect and there's a clear motive now it's up to skeleton Try and win this hopeless case. I'm not selling these books very well, but I'm very excited. I love murder mysteries, so that I'm excited to read. Then I'm gonna be honest, this book, Mirabel. Even when I bought it, the lady at the bookstore went, hmm, and I went to watch. She went, interesting choice, but I still bought it. Um, this is Merival by Rose Tremaine, Tremaine, Rose Tremaine and basically I read the back and I heard the gaudy years of the restoration are long gone and Robert Merival, physician and courtier to King Charles II and I picked it up and stopped reading. I have no clue what this book is about. All I know is King George II, King Charles II and French court and period dramas and I picked it up. Um, there's a woman trying to secu seduce him. It sounds interesting. It sounds spicy for the, like, what is this? I don't even know, 1600s, whatever it is. And it seems like it's a really small person book, but I'm excited to read it. And I just looked at how small the writing is and I'm scared as well though. So yes, that's that one. Then I have Louise Edric, The Night Watchman. This is, 1953 rural North Dakota there's a night watchman at the first factory to open near the Total Mountain Reservation he's a council member and he's troubled by the US government by the US government's new emancipation bill this is two people and their stories weave, they work at the same factory, the one is a watchman, the other one is a woman in a factory, um, she doesn't have enough money to support her family and she's trying to make it. And I honestly just enjoyed the cover and decided to pick it up and um, when I read like people finding each other etc etc, I was like, yes, this is it. Oh, I put everything in an order so I didn't have to reorganize when I got to my bookshelf, but anyway, I just realized I messed it up. What a Way to Go by Julia Foster. Foster. This is someone, it's a story in nine, set in 1980s, and it's a story about someone's divorced parents and how this person feels that it's their fault for the divorce and how they're trying to work through not thinking that it's their fault for the divorce and realizing it's the parents' fault. Um, I feel this can be applied to a lot of places in my life. Not necessarily divorce, my parents never divorced, but it can be applied to some things. So I am excited to read this and maybe, who knows, I'll find some truth from the fiction that I can apply to my life. That's why I picked it up. I don't like non-fiction books, but I do like reading fiction books. Like one of the other ones I got because it says secrets of happiness. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll find a secret or two. This one. The Fine Art of Invisible Detection by Robert Goddard. I don't know, it was just murder mystery and I went yes and I looked at the cover and I went even more yes. It seems like it's a woman which is even more yes. Yep, it's a woman. Oh yes! So this story, um, she's a secretary and then She's a secretary to private detective and then I think basically she has to take over a case that of the boss um, because it can kill him and it's, she's battling for her own survival. And I don't know, 
it just looked very cool so that's why i got this one this is such a great book haul don't you agree i'm giving setting the books so well <clears throat> this is what i call the chaotic non-book talk or booktube book haul i changed my hair again because it was annoying me anyway this is what i was talking about earlier the secrets of happiness this is a guy who finds out his father has another family um and there's a lot of love triangles in this apparently but to be honest i picked it up because look at how cool the cover is it's like the puzzle that's imprinted and also because maybe i was gonna find the secret of happiness in here who knows you never know actually so yeah that's why i picked up her then we have the wilderness between us by penny hall this is a story set in South Africa, I think. Yes. Then the Tsitsi Kama. And an anorexic daughter of Faye McKenzie and her friend's anorexic daughter, Claire. They're thrown together and a flood separates them from the rest of the traveling group, like the hiking group. Now, Claire and Faye have to work together. And then there's a beautiful part where they said, as their French, new friendship takes a woman on an unexpected journey of discovery, the rest of the group wrestles with the harrowing aftermath of their own near tragedy. And I just thought there's also another part where they say that like they found strength within each other. And I just thought it was gonna be a beautiful story about women finding strength within each other and maybe I was gonna find some strength within myself. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of these books are like, oh, maybe it can help me as well. So yes, that's why I got it. And also, just like, look at the cover. This is not the best, but this is, oh, beautiful. Anyway, next, before we I say, look at that cover, it has little symbols in between the fish scales. Anyway, The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. And it's another, it's another murder, not a murder mystery, this is another mystery. I think it's a murder. I don't know, but it's a mystery. And basically, there's this writer who this one person believes had codes in their writing, and then they figure out the code, and then they have to try and like track down the things, etc., etc. Um, his one teacher kept on going on about this writer, and then the teacher died, and now they have to go and figure it out. I think that's what it is. I didn't read the blurb too well, but yeah, I'm very excited. It looks cool, but again, I'm more excited for the first to die at the end but still it looks cool i'm very excited to read this one this one was recommended to me by the ladies at the bookstore on the first day when she saw my purchases <laughs> pandora um susan stokes chapman on the front it says weaves together ancient greek myth of suspenseful mystery utterly irresistible i saw that and i went yep i'm buying this and all to the back is some doors are kept locked for a reason. No clue what it's about. It's set in London, 1799. Oh, it's a jewelry art. Oh yes, it's two people trying to find, like you get the same vase. The one wants to do it, to, like get their jewelry store going and the other one wants to do it for revenge or something. I know it looked really cool and I'm very excited. When I saw ancient Greek myth, I went, yes, I love the Greek mythology and I love Egypt, like ancient Egypt. And on to our last book, I think it is. Marianne Lane and the Deadly Rose by T.A. Wilberg. But can we just look at that cover? Like, it is so beautiful. Um, basically, hold on. This is about a killer called The Florist and it's set in 1959. As you can see, I don't like a lot of new time books. I prefer like old age because I'm living in the new time. Why do I need to read a book about it? But yeah, I'm very excited about this. It's a beautiful cover. It's about a killer called The Florist. And someone who's a second year has to like come to face. I don't know, I'm very excited. And that's it. This is my very chaotic, not helpful at all, just I guess for your own enjoyment, book haul video. I will never be doing one of these again. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's me Arwen and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like. If you did, subscribe because I'm a YouTuber and I have to ask. Turn on notifications even though they don't work. Massive, huge, ginormous, gigantic shout out to my members whose names will be on the screen after this. 
It was very inaccurate over the holiday, but they will be accurate now. I love you so much. Stay safe.